All right, well, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about today what inspired me to get into science and maybe what inspired me to do the research I do. And my probably earliest uh, inspiration came from a television show, and that was Star Trek, when you saw Dr. Leonard McCoy, who would treat these people with these little tricorders and things, able to diagnose and treat them without having to cut them open and do things. And that was inspirational. And then when I was an undergraduate in college, I met a friend in a calculus class, and she was telling me about research that she was doing where they were using ultrasound. This is high frequency sound waves, things we can't hear, but that they could be focused just like, for example, here you can see focusing the sunlight with a magnifying glass to burn and destroy leaves and other things that we all did as kids. Well, you can focus ultrasound to go past the body surface into tissue that's diseased like a tumor and to burn it or to ablate it so that it is destroyed. And just like with the uh, magnifying glass, if you put your hand in front of the magnifying glass away from that focus, you don't get burned. And so the tissue that is between the tr ultrasonic uh, transducer, that's the thing that produces the ultrasound, and the site you want to destroy, there's no harm done to the normal tissue. Now, another way that you can use ultrasound is to use these things called microbubbles. These are tiny bubbles that are uh, gas bubbles surrounded by a little bit of protein and sugar, a shell, and they will react with the ultrasound. They will oscillate, going in and out, in and out, and that produces energy. And these can either collapse and produce a shock wave that's really destructive, but they will act as means of taking this ultrasound wave and making it do things to cells and tissues, either destroying them, or we can make it so that it makes these cells open up a little bit for a short period of time so that you can deliver drugs and things, but only in that focused area where the ultrasound is being applied. So it's a way of targeting chemotherapy and other uh, drugs that if you give them intravenously through the whole body can have these nasty side effects that you've heard about. So these are microbubbles. We make them in my laboratory. And these microbubbles were the only lab in the world where you can make them different sizes and make a pure size distribution. And we can change their acoustic properties, how they respond to the ultrasound, what frequency, what intensity they do things. So we can design them specifically for certain jobs, either for destruction, for uh, drug delivery of drugs, and other therapeutics with the ultrasound. Another one that's really an uh, application that's dear to my heart is we're doing some st uh, stroke therapy with my colleague Bill Culp in radiology. And this is where we use the microbubbles. And you can see here on the left of this figure that there's a, a clot, blood clot, causing a stroke in this brain. But if you use ultrasound with microbubbles, it breaks the clot and allows, now you can see the angiography showing, which is being able to visualize the blood vessels, uh, shows that there's better circulation now. Now, I suffered a brain aneurysm and a stroke back in 2001. And that was left me without any, the ability to read for almost four years. I couldn't read or write. And so being able to do this type of treatment to help people avoid the problems that follow after a stroke is really meaningful to me. Another thing that I'm working with a friend, Gal Schafferstein, over in otolaryngology, which is head and neck cancer area, or head and neck, uh, some people say ear, nose, and throat, all these different areas of otolaryngology. We've made these liposomes, and these are like microbubbles, except instead of being filled with gas, they're filled with liquid. You can use drugs and things. And we made one that it's filled with a dye that absorbs a certain wavelength of laser light. And the drug is in there, too. And so what happens is as it's circulating in the body, you focus the laser in the disease tissue. It will then release the drug at only at that site. And you can see here is a, an issue where we have normal vasculature and afterwards, the dye that was released absorbs the laser light. And you can see this black and dead area that that's where we delivered the drug. So this is another way of focusing things. If the ultrasound's not prop, uh, the best medium to use, we can use laser. This would be good especially for surface tumors and things like in the head and neck or other parts of the body. Another thing, therapy that's often used is radiation therapy. We can deliver ionizing radiation, x-rays very, very precisely into a tumor. And with uh, colleagues in radiation oncology, uh, that would be Peter Corey and uh, Greg Salamo up at Fayetteville campus, we developed 
a liposome, just like I showed you with the laser, but in here, the liposome will react with the ionizing radiation to release the drug only where the x-rays are being delivered. And some drugs react really well with the x-ray at the same time. It gives you a, not just double the effect or triple, but sometimes 10 times the therapeutic effect. And so this is a way of delivering these drugs to where the radiation is being uh, done and only that place. So it minimizes, again, the uh, cytotoxicity or the damage, the side effects, the illness that come with doing chemotherapy through IV. And that's hair loss. You've known about this. But there are other things, muscle aches, fatigue, nausea. And I know this because my mother was suffering with lung cancer, and she had to go through radiation and chemo treatments. And for about three years, she was just depleted. Thank God they worked for her, and she lived another three years before succumbing to her disease. But it was difficult for her. Another way that we're doing here at UAMS, and this is with our interventional radiologists, uh, and that would be uh, Wolf Haberlein and also Dr. Kulp and Mike Beheshti. One of the things we do is we put probes into the tumor, and these are called radiofrequency ablation to, uh, probes. Ablation just simply means to heat or cook or destroy. And these are put directly into the tumor, and we heat up the tumor and cook it, basically turn it into a heated mass, ablated. We can also then put in liposomes that we and others make. They're temperature sensitive. So as you're in the area where you're heating, they will release drugs and other therapeutics to help that heated area destroy the tumor. No matter how well you heat, there's always a few tumor cells left behind or out near the perimeter of this. So this heat release of the drugs will concentrate the drug where the tumor is and minimize the chances of the tumor regrowing. Now, you still will have to do some systemic chemotherapy and other systemic treatments because some drug, I mean, some, I should say, some tumor cells may have metastasized, in other words, migrated away from the main tumor to other parts of the body. But using these localized treatments allows you to use a higher concentrated impact to destroy that primary tumor and minimize the chance of regrowth. That's the first step in cancer treatment, for example, is to get local control. Control the area and make sure it doesn't grow back. When you get local control, you double, triple, even quadruple the prob probability of someone surviving that cancer and getting a cure. Without local control, there is no cure. 